This video contains commentary. What's cracking, my dudes? Welcome back to Storytime with your favorite Reddit fairy. My name is Lorna, and today we're getting into some r slash choosing beggars. But that's not all. You guys responded to a poll that I posted on the weekend, and a good majority, I'd say about, I think it was 44% of you, chose r slash asshole tax for the follow-up. So we're going to get into that, and I also want to apologize once again for my absence yesterday. It was a fun day. I I'm surviving. Let's just say that. We're <laughs> I'm hanging in there, my dudes. So without further ado, smash that subscribe button, sit back, relax, and let's get right into it. Why is only some of the wine free to taste? The premium wine should also be free. Posted by user national-detective. In this wine region, if you go to cellar doors, you can get wine tastings for free. Hit up a bunch of wineries and it's a good, good day. Some sellers may have a premium range, which they ask for a small fee to sample, but there will be other wines you can taste for free. Any place that charges you a fee will refund the fee if you buy any wine. Went to a well-known place and tasted about 10 wines for free. They had a premium dessert range, and if I wanted to sample that, it would be $10. I'm not into sweets, so I skipped that, even though I was buying other wine. This other random couple were already there before we arrived for our tasting. They had been low-key arguing with a staff member the entire time we were walked through 10 wines, and who knows how long before we arrived. I was buying some wine, so approached the register near the couple. Karen in the couple was very insistent on sampling the premium dessert wines, but did not want to pay. Sweet wines are my absolute favorite, so I will definitely buy a lot of bottles, so you should just give me a free tasting anyway. The very patient staff member was repeatedly explaining that the $10 would be immediately credited to any wine purchase. I left Karen still arguing with staff. She could have hit another nearby winery and tasted a dozen wines in the time she took to argue over $10. <laughs> oh my god, people, just stop it. Stop it, Karen. <laughs> This is probably like a huge stereotype, but I would assume there would be a lot more Karens at like a winery. Uh, maybe that's just me. I, I, I could be totally wrong. Maybe there would be more. At, I don't know. I don't know. Where do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Where do you think would be the best place to find a high percentage of Karens? Let me know in the comments below. Before I move on to the next story, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on all notifications for future videos just like this one. Otherwise, I'm gonna send a Karen to your work and let her annoy you a little bit while you're trying to do your thing. <laughs> Let's get into the next story. This one is called, eBay buyer wanted full refund and to keep item. Posted by user Starbug360. Okay. So this is something that happened quite a few years ago. So exact details may be a little fuzzy. I'm a big fan of the Battletech game franchise and have managed to collect a full set of the accompanying novels that flesh out the setting. One particular book that's somewhat hard to get a hold of is the very first one, a book by the name of The Sword and the Dagger. I was lucky enough to get a copy for my birthday one year, but I have had the good fortune to stumble across two more copies at rummage sales and a secondhand bookshop. First extra copy I found, I sold to a friend for the same price I paid for it. 50 pence. Actually, got a death threat for that. But this story is about the last copy to pass through my hands. Now, the book was over 20 years old at this point, and not in the best of conditions, but still perfectly readable. I asked around a couple of places online, but everyone either had a copy or didn't have any money to spare, even at a reduced rate. I was more interested in it going to someone who'd appreciate it rather than making money on it. So I listed it on eBay. I took photos from every angle, listed all the cracks and nicks it had picked up over the years. I was never anything but completely honest with the condition of the book. Bidding soon got heated and I ended up selling it for over 50 pounds, which wasn't a bad return on something I paid about three pounds for. First red flag was when the winning bidder asked if he could pay by personal check even though I'd made it clear that I was only expecting PayPal. He claimed that there was an issue with his account, but he also wanted me to post the book as soon as the check arrived. Trying to be helpful, I agreed to accept a check, but made it clear that I'd only post once it cleared. 
Magically, the issue with his PayPal vanished and he promptly paid. Given the value of the book, I sent it special delivery so I'd not only be able to track it, but it would be insured against loss or damage. Probably a good thing I did, given what happened next. I get a message from eBay saying that a complaint has been made against me by the buyer. He said that the book was in used condition. He was looking for a full refund and intended to keep the book. I told eBay to look at the listing, including the photos and the detailed description of the condition of the book. I did, however, offer to give a full refund, provided the book was returned to me by the same postal method. He refused my offer. He wanted a full refund and to keep the book. I tell eBay that if he wanted to keep the book, I'd offer a £10 refund, really just to shut him up and get it over with. Again, I had been less concerned with the money as the book getting into the hands of someone who would appreciate it. We went back and forth a few times, until eBay stepped in and agreed that my offer of a £10 refund was more than enough under the circumstances, and quickly processed it for me. Given the very careful language they used, I got the impression that they were as sick of dealing with him as I was by that point. Unfortunately, he left me very negative feedback the same day he issued his complaint. Didn't know eBay let you call people a cockbite in your feedback. But I was a bit more reserved and simply advised against doing business with them. Oh my god. Isn't there a thing on eBay where like you can um, dispute comments le like or reviews left by customers and they can remove them if... Because clearly... Well, then again, like they he did give him a refund though. You shouldn't have given him anything at all if it, it's his own fault or her. Who knows? I don't know. It's their own fault for not looking at the listing a little more thoroughly, or they did look at it and they're like, hmm, he forgot to leave out this one little tiny key word, so maybe I can get back at him or her. I always assume the poster is a dude or <laughs> everybody's a dude to me, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> um, I just, I don't know. They're, I don't know if this is like intentional or they're just like really stupid. You know what I'm saying? You don't know, but they're they're paying the tax, I guess. Are they though? Like I don't I don't know. They're getting what they paid for. It's almost like OP was the one that had to pay the tax, you know, because they ended up having to give ten pounds back to this person. This person didn't pay any kind of tax. What it? I don't get. I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. <laughs> let me know in the comments below if you disagree with me. I'd love to hear your reasoning behind it. And uh, let's get into the last choosing beggar story of the day, my dudes. This one is called "Choosing Beggar Wants Free Rent," posted by user Cat Piss Everqueef. <laughs> okay, not me, but a family member. He owns a couple of small commercial buildings with three or four different tenants that operate retail and restaurant businesses, and a small tech firm. All of the businesses are small, one-off businesses, family-owned, etc. Obviously, they are being hit hard by the whole world pandemic thing and things being shut down. My family member being the person they are is concerned for his tenants, not just from a business perspective, but from a human side too. He wants to see them get through this not only for them and their families, but for his income as well. So he has offered them financial assistance for the month of April, and potentially further as things progress. The tech business he has offered straight up rent reduction with no expectation of getting anything back. This tenant takes the majority of his available space, and they have had a 5-10 to 10 year plan of this tenant eventually buying him out of the buildings as the business grows. Who knows where that is now, but it is in his best interest to keep this business around, long term, and take short term financial hit on rent. The retail and restaurant business, he has arranged a deal where he reduces their rent by 20 to 25 percent by purchasing gift cards. Literally thousands of dollars worth of gift cards that the tenant can use that revenue to offset rent. Instead of just giving them a freebie, he is giving them revenue that may or may not be used in the future. He may give the cards away at fundraisers, to family, etc. And that will bring people into these shops that will in all likelihood spend more at the establishments than the gift card itself is worth. The retail shop jumped on this as a win-win situation. The restaurant owner tried to negotiate no rent, but eventually went along with this idea reluctantly. None of the other tenants are aware of their neighbor's tech firm deal. The restaurant owner is now going around not only to the other tenants, but to the neighboring buildings with different owners and complaining that my family member is a greedy asshole for forcing him to pay rent during this time. 
Of all the tenants, he has the most revenue coming in right now because he can still do takeout and delivery. Oh my god. This is why people are against socialist programs, because the people that don't really need them are the ones that are complaining that they're not getting them more. Like, you're getting 20 to 25% off of your rent by purchasing these gifts. Like, come on, man. You're, you're getting business right now, so why are you taking away the help from somebody who actually really needs it? I'm sure your business is taking a little bit of a hit, but you're still in business, unlike some people that are not able to pay their employees whatsoever because they rely on things that can't be received at the moment. You know what I mean? Like, fucking dickheads. <laughs> All right, that's all the r slash choosing beggar stories I've got for you today. Let's get into some r slash asshole tax. This first story is called Crazy Lady Refuses to Pay for a Lotto Ticket, Ends Up Losing $12,000. Posted by user DeadMat420. I'm the night shifts manager for a small family run gas station slash deli. The girl on register this time is my work daughter, Jules. She's this tiny 4 foot 11 blonde girl who looks 12. This woman named Rhonda comes in. Rhonda is a regular and we all hate her, so I normally deal with her. Some backstory on Rhonda is imagine a woman who is round as she is tall and has 80s perm haircut. She's always playing scratchers and something called quick draw. Playing lotto is this woman's life. Quick draw is a timed game. There is a TV in the corner of the store and you can watch as 20 numbers are selected. You can pick anywhere between two and 10 numbers. If the numbers you select come out, then you win. The amount of money you can win depends on a couple of things. If you pick five numbers, you will win more money than if you only bet two numbers. The amount of money you place on your bet, and at the end, where there is a wheel that looks like a roulette table, and it may land on a bonus. On Thursdays, there's a guaranteed bonus no matter what. Two times, three times, five times, and ten times. There are two minutes between each round. Customers fill out their own slips that I can put into the top of the lotto machine to print out their tickets, or I'm able to manually enter them by pressing a few buttons on the screen. If you do not get your numbers in during the two minute break, your ticket will be for the next game, not the current game. This day was a Thursday, so the bonus is guaranteed between 6pm and 8pm. Rhonda never misses this event. Rhonda has previously missed out on a win because Jules was ringing out the customers in the order they walked up to the register and was a dick to her because this dumb little blonde bitch can't do her job right so I just lost $200 because of her. Jules is a sweetheart and didn't need that kind of negativity in her life so I took over the register at this point. We all hate Rhonda and we also hate lotto people. Rhonda decided she's going to start max betting. I guess she's feeling lucky, so she's filling out slips at a table. She springs from the table and runs up to the counter and hands me the slips, and runs to the bathroom and says something on the way. All I heard was, drop them, the slips. So I did. When she exits the bathroom, I have her printed out tickets and inform her now that she needs to pay me $500. Rhonda is arguing with me, saying that she said don't drop them and that she's refusing to pay for the tickets now. This is my fault. I was a little stoned and should have gotten her money first. She had previously done the same shit costing the store $200, and I should have known better, especially with Rhonda's reputation as a difficult Karen kind of bitch. Like a trailer park version of a Karen. The store is about to eat a $500 loss because I'm a dumbass. This is going on as I'm watching the TV in the corner, seeing what numbers pop up with Rhonda yelling at me for being incompetent. This is why you work at a gas station, you outside. You can't even listen to your customers. I look up and start laughing because the numbers came out on a 10 times draw. I now have a $10,000 ticket in my hand and Rhonda was paying enough attention to realize why I was laughing. She comes up to apologize and ask if she can now pay for the ticket. Nope, that's not how this works. You can't pay me $500 for a winning $10,000 game. You should have paid for them when I asked you to. Side note, she's playing more than just one game, so the next round is also on this ticket. As we're arguing, the next round hits for $2,000. Now, I've got a middle-aged woman losing it in my store because she's now not going to win $12,000. She just keeps screaming at me, so I called the owner of the store because I'm getting nowhere. I tell him everything. He's laughing on the other end and tells me to put the winning tickets in his office. He then tells me to put her on the phone, and I do. 
I watch her face go from pure joy, thinking the owner is going to take her side, to rage as she soon realized she's getting kicked out of the store for causing a scene. Her next move was a fake trip and to pretend like she broke her hip. I called for an ambulance. She's now out of my store. The fallout was my owner giving me a thousand dollar bonus out of the winnings. She tried to sue us and get us to pay for the cost of an ambulance and lost. She played herself and lost a lot of money because she was being a bitch. Edit. Sorry for my bad storytelling. I attempted to edit it so the details are clear. If anyone would like to suggest some more edits or spelling errors, let me know in the comments. <laughs> oh my god, so not only did she have to probably pay for an ambulance, she also lost out on $12,000. This is why you don't scam people. You, it just... Uh... Sometimes people get away with it. I'm say that that kind of sucks. But like, I love it when like this is like an instant karma moment where you thought you were gonna be, you know, a bitch and scam them out of some money. But like, well, who knows? Like, maybe she did say don't drop them. You you never know. Like, uh, this guy did say he was stoned, and depending on if he just smoked or not, you could be in that hazy period where it's like <laughs> you tune in at the at the the worst moment so if she said don't drop maybe his brain started listening to her at drop instead and didn't hear don't who knows <laughs> who knows i don't know but she sounds like a bitch so she got what she deserved i guess <laughs> crazy roommate breaks lease and moves out early ends up losing 800 dollars by talking crap on social media posted by user not v the chemist i think maybe <laughs> Hello all, if you read through my reddit history, I believe I have some crazy roommate stories posted. Shout out to r slash relationship advice for being real ones. So my roommate moved out. What happened is our college went online like many schools because of the beer illness, and she saw no reason to stay in the city we live in, so she decided to move back home where her boyfriend is. The problem is she paid a few months in advance until her lease ends in May. My mom bought the house we live in and acts as our landlord and is an absolute saint. She let my roommate live rent-free the last few months of 2019 because she hated living in the dorm and got stressed from it. My roommate came demanding her money back for April and May since she wouldn't be there and mom said that because it was her choice that she moved out, she won't be paying her back. However, she said that if her and I worked to find a new suitable tenant, she'd pay her back the $800 for those two months. Since my classes are now online, my life is a little hectic and I'm not exactly in the position to be roommate searching and with only a few days notice, but I've always seen her as my friend through thick and thin and was willing to spend some time talking and interviewing other girls who might take her place. I know I'm crunched for time since April is approaching, so I went with this really sweet girl who I didn't know much about, but hopefully it'll be the end of crazy roommate posts. I updated my ex-roommate a few days ago that I might have found someone nice. Unfortunately, the girl can't move in until what looks like early May, but my mom was going to pay back my roommate for the month of April anyway, solely out of kindness. I find out today that my now ex-roommate removed me on everything and from friends that she posted some really rude things on social media about me as a roommate and bitching about how my mom won't pay her back the money because she's broke, unemployed, and needs it now more than ever. Never mind the fact that she broke on a lease and literally up and left her job here at Walmart, one of the few jobs still open. She had made some rude comments about my mom, who she hasn't seen in person in who knows when, who always offers to take us out for smoothies or coffee, and I know I'm being biased, but is the sweetest person. When she was moving out, that I held my tongue about. I sent my mom screenshots and called her up, and she decided to revoke her offer of grace and will not be paying her back. Since she did not pay a security deposit and lived rent-free for two months, the extra money will be used to fix up some damage to walls in her former bedroom as well as being budgeted for groceries during this time of quarantine. If my ex-roommate had just kept her mouth shut and didn't try to talk shit about her landlord, who has been nothing but kind to her and myself, who obviously is going to show my mom, she could have gotten back her money despite breaking the lease. Play stupid games? Win stupid prizes. Fo show. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Why are people, like, especially, like, if you're friends with this person, you're roommates with them, you're trying to be nice, trying to help them out, trying to get them out of their lease, like, you signed a contract, don't play, like, this ain't your mom, it's your friend's mom, she doesn't owe you shit. 
to you, to her, you're just you're just somebody that pays the rent. Like she doesn't have to care about you. But clearly, she did. This mom so good. Fuck this woman cuz she needs to learn a lesson. Maybe she will, probably not. But, you know, one can one can keep the hope, I think. Hopefully, I'm a hoper. Let's see. I don't know. Ah. Yeah, I'm probably probably so 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 wrong. <laughs> All right, my dudes, the last story of the day is called I Won't Tell Anyone. Posted by user PO underscore Dylan. Obligatory first post, formatting, mobile, and minor story apology. I work at what is considered the nicest gas station in my town, and we tend to overcharge for some stuff like refills. Amidst all of the panic buying and the general treatment of cashiers, I try my best to be as kind to others as they are to me. In the middle of the afternoon, two middle school age girls come in and start wandering the store, getting slushies, talking, and looking around while their guardian pumped gas. He comes in, they assemble their little haul of stuff, and the guardian starts making jokes with me, asking about how work has been with the isolation, and generally treating me like a person instead of the usual, this is what I want, so I'm gonna throw money onto the counter instead of handing it to ya. While the man is paying, I notice the slushies are about half full, so I tell them, if you want to fill those back up before you go, I won't sell anyone. They seem excited and go do that, and I get a genuine thanks from all three of them. As a <laughs> Somebody pointed out, this is a niceness tax. This don't belong in here. What's this doing in here? Why does it have so many upvotes? <laughs> but that's awesome. Uh, yeah, decency discount. Let's go through all these. <laughs> How about a uh, saint subsidy or... This guy says, oh, there's what? There's a subreddit called r slash decency discount. Guys, I'm going to subscribe to this one because we're going to see what that one's all about eventually. <laughs> uh, niceness tax break. That's so awesome. Good for you. I mean, it's, it's good that some people can still kind of keep it good, you know, like keep spirits up for other people in times like this. When like I'm I live in a small town and it was late for everybody to, to the, the whole teepee craze was late to hit my little small town that I live in. Uh, we had teepee for a while and then I mentioned it to one person and after that it was gone. It was gone. I don't want to blame this person, but I told them I'm keeping it quiet so I can go back and get someone I needed because <laughs> it's out in the middle of nowhere. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't know. That store hasn't had teepee in like a week now. I I've got about half a package left, so <laughs> hopefully they get restocked soon. <laughs> Otherwise, they might have to build an outhouse or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> With the hook up the hose. It's, it's about springtime, right? <laughs> oh my god, this is awful. This whole situation sucks. I'm going stir crazy. I want to go out places. <laughs> but stay home. Just stay home. And it'll be over sooner than later, please. I definitely wouldn't want to be touching no Slurpee machines, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Just You shouldn't be going out for anything but essentials, and Slurpees are not essential. I mean, maybe to kids they are, but not to me. <laughs> all right, my dudes, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you did like it, maybe consider smashing that like button. It really helps me out. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on all notifications for future videos just like this one so you never miss one. And as always, the links to these stories will be in the description below. So head on over to Reddit and show those posters some love with some upvotes. You know they deserve it, my dudes. Don't forget to submit your stories, all my social links, and all that fun stuff are in the description below as well. So if you want to submit your stories, all those links, you know, Facebook, email, all that fun stuff are in, down there. <laughs> Just scroll, scrolly, scrolly, down, down. There they are. Fun stuff. <laughs> all right, my dudes, you all have a fan fucking tabulous day and I will see you in tomorrow's episode. Peace out, my dudes.